Morning, Wendy. What's the biggest thing the Celtics need to fix tonight? I mean, I feel like uh, I'm a broken record because I've been talking about it like for a month now. They just can't turn the ball over. Um, to put it in football terms, for some reason, they're like that young quarterback with the big arm, and he rolls out, and he knows he shouldn't throw it back, back across the middle because he knows it's going to get picked off, and he just does it. And you can tell him 30 times that he won't stop doing it. The Celtics will not stop dribbling into crowds, specifically Tatum and Brown. They will not stop throwing dangerous passes, and it's completely undercutting them. Um, I really thought, like most people did, and like we focused on for the most of this series, that this was going to be about Steph Curry versus Celtics defense. It's a classic Titans matchup, best defense in the league versus one of the greatest players of all time, and that has been compelling. But it's not where the series is being won. It's being controlled at the other end with the Warriors doing great job being physical defensively and forcing the Celtics into their worst habit and just controlling the ball. Controlling the ball is the key. If the Celtics control the ball, they can still win this series. Wendy, I agree with you. That pass that Marcus Smart threw with like 22 seconds left on the shot clock, which was a lob from half court. You're like, what, what the hell are you doing, man? Why, why? There's no need for it. But let's talk about Boston's offense for a second. Because one of the things that's really frustrated me, Wendy, that I've seen is the amount of complaining about lack there of calls. It just takes away from their focus on the game. Are you seeing the same things? And then if you are, like, what are they doing to address that? So they had a team meeting yesterday before the practice. Now, a team meetings are normal, as you guys know. It's not something special. But in the meeting, they address the complaining. And by the way, Ime Udoka... Got a technical foul for uh, for complaining during Game Five. He was talking, uh, looking in the mirror as well. They just don't have the margin for error to lose two to five possessions a game, complaining about a call. And if you're a Celtics fan, you can what about? You can point to ten different calls. You can point to that Jordan Poole flop, for example. Mm. Yeah, it's a physical series, and there's been some calls that have not gone the Celtics' way. That is not a reason to allow, um, uh, you know, to get out of plays. And, you know, I think offensively, that's one issue. Dribbling into crowds is another issue. And I do think that fatigue is playing a bit of a role. I, I thought Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown may have gotten a little tired, and I, and I don't really blame them. Jason Tatum is coming up on 1,000 minutes played in this postseason. So I think trying to figure out how to keep him a little bit fresher if you can. I think all of those things they're looking at going into tonight. Wendy, we saw Clay have a nice game in game five. Can he expand on that in game six and become game six, Clay? Yeah, if you're a Warriors fan, you may have a little bit of goosebumps about Clay Thompson coming into this game because really for the last three games, he has improved. He definitely had his best game in game five, had a couple of huge three pointers in the second half. And you look at this year, you don't even have to go back into YouTube like Clay was uh, to go get the old game sixes. In, in, the, in the games where they've closed out this postseason, the last two rounds, he's averaging over 30 points, shooting over 50% from the field. Did it against Memphis, did it against Dallas. Just to close out in game five in the last round, he put up 30. So, yes, they're going to be heavily reliant on Steph. That is definitely going to be the case. But Clay Thompson is a guy who's proven it, proven he can do this. And, uh, you know, it's obviously a big potential moment for him tonight. Brian Windhorst, ESPN NBA insider, joining us here on Keyshawn, J. Will and Max. Wendy, the way they defended Stephen Curry in game five was different. They made that slight adjustment having Al Horford not so much in drop coverage but up on those ball screens. I mean, 233 consecutive games in which Stephen Curry has made a three. They had him 0 for 9 in game five. Do you think we'll continue? We'll see the same kind of adjustments tonight? And then if, you're, if you are Golden State, how do you combat that? Yeah, well, I think one of the things that was happening in the first few uh, games in the series is, and, and the Celtics even openly said this, is that the, the Warriors players were setting the screen for Steph and um, then just not even rolling. Not, you know, they were just sort of setting the screen and just not doing anything, and it made it easier for them to commit the big man on defense. 
that changed a little bit in game five. You know, uh, Draymond Green had a couple of roles. There was a couple other actions that they got out of it. Um, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of the numbers, um, this, the, uh, the Warriors are setting about 15% more screens for Steph than they, do, than they did throughout the season because they've gone away from their motion offense a little bit. So they, ha- they, they just have to get back into more old school actually rolling after you set the pick. Um, but even with him going 0 for 9, his shot quality wasn't that much different than earlier in the series. And Kurt Goldsberry, who's one of our great um, writers and statisticians at ESPN, he pointed out that Steph is averaging 13 and a half points a game without assists unassisted 13 and a half points a game without assist during uh, these finals. Now you would never compare Steph to a guy like Shaq. You would say that they're completely different players, but if you went back to 1999 and watched how Shaq played, he would score like 12 to 15 points a game unassisted. They would dump it down to him and he would be banging the ball in the post and he'd get fouled or he'd make a basket and you'd say, boy, that's great old school basketball. That's what Steph is doing. He's just doing Mm -hmm. it 25 feet from the basket instead of six feet from the basket. He's basically become Shaquille O'Neal from the outside. Yep, and they're going to need one more game like that potentially from him and then wrap this thing up. Brian Windhorst, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it, Brian. What a nugget, Wendy. Well done. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Yeah, he's uh, that. we're looking for it, right? Hero ball in a way. From the outside, think about that. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.